In this eight-part weight loss series, we'll show you in detail, including the science and protocols, how to take all this ugly, unwanted belly fat and go from this to this in as little as five weeks. In this fifth part, we cover muscles. Not these muscles. Everyone wants to have more muscle. Who wouldn't? But it's a lot of work. You lift your weights, you get sore, you eat your protein, and you repeat. That's all there is to it, right? Well, hold on to your hats. Keep watching. The previous four videos in the series covered how to get from this to this in as little as five weeks. That's not really about muscles, that's about fat loss. In this video, we are going to cover the question of building muscle and losing fat at the same time, something often referred to as body recomposition. We will cover strategy and whether it's a good idea and answer questions of muscle loss and muscle memory. Most importantly, we are going to dig into hypertrophy. Most people believe if you go to the gym, lift weights, recover and eat your protein, that's all there is to it. Ugh. Best day? What, to give the weights a day off? It's one way, and of course it works. But if you've been around long enough, you would have heard of the law of specificity. What if hypertrophy wasn't specific enough? What if there were three types of hypertrophy for muscle growth? And what if we could show you how to target each of them? Bodybuilders, hard gainers, or people that just want a good six pack and nice guns. We got your attention? Good, you're gonna love this video. Keep watching. We are going to start with an important fitness rule which applies to all types of training. This is called the law of specificity, which basically means you're going to get specific outcomes for the type of training you're putting in. An easy way to explain it would be if you were training your biceps directly, you would expect something to happen in your biceps. You wouldn't expect six pack abs to appear as a result. If you train your biceps with light weight, heavy weight, no weight, you'd expect a different outcome from each. Same is true for all types of fitness. In fat loss, we covered why burning calories doesn't mean those calories or energy expenditure necessarily comes from the burning of fat. Burning calories means doing stuff, which isn't specific at all. In muscle building, the tempo, reps, sets, loads lifted, as well as the contractions used, changes the outcomes you are gonna get. And lastly, you can't use training as a catch-all approach. Training for fat loss is specific. Training for muscle is specific in a different way. Training for strength, endurance, power, longevity. They each require a specific approach. Your goals and therefore your training should always be specific. And regardless of what you're training for, you need to make sure you understand how the type of training you are doing supports the specific outcome you're trying to achieve. Okay, let's dive right into the juicy stuff. When it comes to building muscle mass, we are generally talking about three types of muscle growth or hypertrophy. You have sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibrillar hypertrophy, which are considered short-term hypertrophies. And you have myonuclear accretion, which is considered a long-term hypertrophy. There are also two more hypertrophy-like components you can work on, and that's muscle tone and collagen content. Before we go any further, let's just make sure we're on the same page. We are going to cover all of the above, but we won't be able to squeeze everything into the short video. This video won't give you a workout plan. You can find those separately on the Bellyproof website under Bellyproof Muscle. Aha, so what is the point in this video? This video is purely here to give you a new insight to make your muscle building journey quicker and more specific. Here are some of the basics. When you train your muscles, certain actions such as pumping, creating lactic acid, inflammatory agents, all contribute to the expansion of the plasma. That gooey stuff that makes the bulk of the muscle and gives it its size. This plasma also includes mitochondria and glycogen. This is known as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. We talk a lot about the mitochondria in the next video about anti-aging, if you were interested to see how it can help you. When you train with high tension, whether you are creating it or you are resisting an external weight, you are triggering myofibrillar hypertrophy. 
more commonly known as protein synthesis. These myofibrils are contractile proteins, actin and myosin, which run the length of a muscle fiber. The last type, myonuclear accretion. Most cells in the body have one nucleus, but muscle cells have multiple nuclei. Each myonucleus, myo means muscle, controls the domain around it, which contains the sarcoplasm and contractile proteins. This is called the myonuclear domain, and each domain has a ceiling known as the myonuclear ceiling. It's quite simple. Your body looks to adapt to stresses. And when you fill your existing domain with plasma and contractile protein, or in other words, when you reach the myonuclear ceiling, your body will need to produce more myonuclei to expand the existing domain. Another more direct way to add new myonuclei is to train for muscle damage. Muscle damage, micro tears, triggers the movement of stem cells called myoblasts, which are mobilized to repair the damage. As they move to repair, they donate their nucleus to the muscle fiber. This process is known as satellite cell fusion. Myonuclei are long-term. They are pretty much impossible to lose. And the more of them you've got, the more sarcoplasm and protein synthesis that will be available to you. If you stop building, you gradually start losing sarcoplasm and protein around each myonuclei, but you don't lose the potential. This is why you can regain muscle fast and also why bodybuilders who take a break, they might not look big, pumped and impressive but you can still tell they're bodybuilders. Generally speaking, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy should always come first and it's best achieved using metabolic stress and concentric contractions. This means volume, lots of sets, lots of reps to get those muscles pumped and sore. Three sets of 12, four sets of eight, triceps, pyramids, drop sets. The answer is yes. They all work if used in a balanced way to increase training volume. Nutrition-wise, you'd need a lot of carbs to support high volume training because sarcoplasm contains a lot of glycogen. More carbs, more glycogen, bigger muscles. Myofibrillar hypertrophy is what you may recognize as protein synthesis. Protein synthesis requires a protein-rich diet. The protein you consume breaks down into amino acids, which the muscles then use to synthesize the muscle-specific proteins to grow the myofibrils. This type of training is mostly influenced by muscle tension. Lastly, myonuclear accretion, the long-term muscle hypertrophy that doesn't really go away. Myonuclear accretion is the result of satellite cell fusion. And to trigger it, you need to focus on muscle damage or micro tears. And the best way to achieve it is with high threshold eccentric contractions. These three hypertrophies are the driving forces behind muscle growth. We also have two other targets, and that's collagen and tone. Tone comes from the word tonus, which means tension, and it's a function of your nervous system. The longer you subject your muscles to tension, ideally via isometric contractions, the more tension they will hold at rest keeping your nervous system a little bit more alert. This results in three things. One, as your nervous system is more alert, you can recruit more muscle fibers and produce better strength. Two, it also means more muscle fibers are contracted at rest. It's a bit like flexing your muscles when you're not even trying, which makes them firmer. Develop more muscle tone and your body becomes firmer. Three, as you have more muscle activity at rest, you require more ATP at all times. This is the primary reason why stronger people are leaner, because some of that energy that is required to keep the muscles semi-contracted at rest will come from the beta oxidation of fatty acids. More tone, more fat burning in the background. The last type of growth would be collagen. Collagen is a protein found in the extracellular connective tissue matrix. You find it everywhere in the body, including the skin, soft tissue, and in the muscles. Collagen provides structure and elasticity, and in your muscles, it means more supple strength or the ability to sustain more forces, both passively and actively. The best way to trigger collagen synthesis is with eccentric training and with supplemental tools like vitamin C, A, MSM, and more. Also, red light therapy is a really good way to stimulate collagen synthesis. Unfortunately, collagen is also an easy target for damage, which needs to be taken into consideration. We explore much more on this in the next video dealing with anti-aging. Now that we have this basic picture of what makes muscles bigger, it's time to start answering some questions. The first thing we want to look at is can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? The, the answer is both yes 
And no, this is known as body recomposition. To build muscle, you need glycogen levels high. This allows you to produce better pumps. And the pump is a critical component for muscle building, especially for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. To lose fat, you want your glycogen levels low, because low glycogen means less competition for burning fatty acids in the mitochondria. You can have your glycogen levels high to favour muscle building, or low to favour fat loss, but you can't have both high and low together. The same goes for training in a fasted state, which is required by the LION protocol. When bodybuilding, you will benefit from eating a few hours before training to fully saturate your body with glycogen and amino acids, the building blocks of protein. You can't exactly remain fasted for fat loss, but at the same time, do the opposite for bodybuilding. You really have to favor one. Lastly, it's quite unspecific to just go to the gym, hit muscle groups and do lots of cardio. Your training needs to be specific to the outcome you're trying to achieve. It's hard enough to dedicate 100% of your energy to one goal, let alone splitting that energy over multiple goals, achieving little to no result. We suggest aiming for one goal and basing your strategy around that goal. What you can do is set a secondary goal. In bodybuilding, you can use the fasted state from the night to squeeze in a bit more fat loss. In fat loss, we employ multiple methods for fat breaking and fat burning, and sometimes there are crossovers. We use it to develop the six pack for the men and firm up the arms and thighs for the ladies. Because sure, losing fat is the main thing, which is great, but wouldn't it be great if you had some definition to reveal underneath the fat? This brings us to the next question. Will you lose muscle during fat loss? True muscle size is dynamic. If you have huge biceps and you go to the gym, you'll come out pumped with even bigger biceps, at least for a few hours anyway. If you go on holiday or stop training, you might feel like you're losing muscle size over time. But rest assured, all that muscle potential you worked so hard on is still there. The moment you stop bodybuilding, you start losing the short-term stuff. Atrophy. Or oh, basically, you lose a little muscle protein and sarcoplasm each day you don't train for bodybuilding. And the only way to prevent it is to engage in bodybuilding every day for the rest of your life and never miss a day in the gym, bro. It's really important you understand it. The moment you stop bodybuilding, whether you are sick, changing your diet or taking a holiday or indeed doing anything else, including fat loss, then you will start to gradually lose size. And it's not because of fat loss, it's because you stop bodybuilding. We're not talking about huge amounts of muscle loss here. And every bit of muscle that you think you've lost can be gained back in as little as two weeks. Thank God for muscle memory. A few last bits before we wrap up. Does having more muscle help you lose fat? Well, yes, a little. Because with bigger muscles, you usually have more strength, glycogen capacity, and more mitochondria. The opposite is also true, as being leaner generally helps you build muscle faster. Another thing that tends to happen is people comment on our results and say it's only possible because of our previous training or muscle memory, and that if we were obese, it would be impossible. Fat loss is fat loss. Muscle building is muscle building. If you have a six pack or any muscles under the fat, they will show when you lose the fat. And while we can't pretend we haven't got a little muscle, you can still tell this is fat. Our next video in this series is all about anti-aging. What was that? Young man, speak up and how to reverse the clock. We personally think this is one of the most exciting subjects we've ever covered. So we hope you watch it. And until next time, stay... Oi, Bridget. How come I've never seen you in the gym? 
Oh, Melody, my lovely. Some of us were blessed with a high metabolism. And the public gymnasium is more for people like, well, you know, people like you who lack self-control in the kitchen. <laughs> I will destroy you. See you then.